morning. Um, a couple of people were interested, so I thought I'd make a video about um, my workflow to get my custom rigs into the game. Um, it's the same workflow for any type of custom rig, but I'm just gonna show what, what I do like here on a, on a little example. Because um, the rig in the end is quite complex. So what we have here is um, I got one of um, animations from XAMO and we targeted it to my Maya rig. Um, so if I show the controls, basically here's the Maya rig. Uh, you can see it's got uh, quite a few uh, controls. You know, you can uh, stop, bend the arms. Let's show here, James, that rig. And pretty much see we have uh, lots of control over areas. You don't want to twist because the twist is taken care of. Um, but you know, we can shift bodies around, uh, do all sorts of cool stuff. Got these little joints here that maneuver the volume and preserve shapes and stuff. Um, so, lots of things going on here. And, and I want all of, oops, I want all of this to reflect them back in the engine. Um, so what I did is I have these joints as a separate skeleton rig. I stripped down all of the unnecessary joints, like uh, the ones that I skim, for example, in these volume joints are these uh, end joints. So I actually don't need the <coughs> these um, base joints for them. And, and other, other joints that I actually don't need, for example, all the end joints I don't skim to them, I can strip them away, um, and change some fingers, lots of stuff. So like now the rig has about, I'd say 450 joints, and when I optimize it, it goes down to 290 or 300, I can't remember. Um, it depends a bit on what I include and what not. Uh, right now, for example, I'm not including any toad stuff for the foot. Because characters are all going to be wearing shoes. So we don't need to do that. Uh, also, I'm not including facial joints, with which I am planning to experiment with in the future. I haven't done that yet. But uh, that's another topic right there. So let's just hide these joints. And I'm going to show the actual skeleton rig that I then export. Right. So this guy is the skeleton rig that I made. You can see it's just everything on the one root as it should be for the game engine. And the root is at 0, 0, 0, unless I use root motion, but I'm not gonna go over what root motion is. You can look that up yourselves if you don't know. Um, but it remains, since I work within place, it remains stationary at 0, 0, 0, and thus makes the pivot point for my character. Um, this clip is already baked to the skeleton, and the script for that is really simple. Um, yeah, it's just a few lines of Python. I oops, script got broken. Okay, back in. Um, so I literally just go over the hierarchy of this one, and parent constraint to any joint I find underneath this group um, and then connect the scale channels. I connect the scale channels separately because if you connect them via the, the main scale like dot s and then bake it out um, you can see I could either just bake the dot s here but I just chose to go with individual channels because that's more stable um, but it was baking them to the individual channels, so it retained the .s connection even after the baking, which caused some weird issues. So that's something maybe people could be aware of. Um, so right after I run the bake command, it just snaps all the joints into place, and because it was the parent constraint with no offset and the direct connections, so everything then matches. And then this skeleton has um, like all the keys. And yeah, so after that, 
I export the skeleton, you know, to FBX. That's pretty standard. And once it's in, FB in FBX, I import it to the game engine. Now there's still a bug in the game engine uh, 4.10, which breaks my entire clips if I import them into that. So I have to import that into 4.9, which works fine. And then export that back out and export uh, import that export back into 4.10, which then works again. I have no idea why, but it's already a reported bug. Um, so hopefully it will be get fixed. But now back in, let's go to the engine here. And now somewhere is it the... Uh, da -da -da. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, animation, movement, jump roll. So I've got this guy here, which is the jump roll that I just made. And I've imported it. And also we have the... Uh, where is it? Here. So I've just made a little uh, anim state for this guy, put it down in there. I'm not gonna explain the engine here. And, right, so let's have a quick look at how it looks like then in the engine. So basically I meant this jump roll to be the jump when you crouch, right? So if you stand up, you jump, I'm gonna use the jump function. And, that's basically moving the character in, up in the air and if you sprint and jump you're gonna jump further and stuff like that but if I crouch I don't want to leave the air I, I don't want that so if I hit jump now it's just gonna dash forward and do like this jump right this like roll jump and right now I only have this one direction so if I like hit the A or D key and hit space um, she's still just gonna do that one jump roll. So that's something that I'm be con con uh, gonna make today as well. This is the other directions for that jump. And for that, I'm just gonna quickly modify um, the Maya animation. So if we go back to Maya, I can show you what I'm gonna do here. Uh, some pretty hacky, cheeky uh, stuff. Um, so because I'm not using root motion, I have the ability to very quickly hack these things together, right? So I set on the on the global control, which is the one that controls the whole character. Um, I set a couple of keys here, and I set them in a way like, for example, this key, obviously key on frame one and frame eight, start and end, and then I set one here, which is about like about when she leads the ground. And then I set another key when she's back on the ground, right? So if I jump onto the graph editor here, uh, let's pick rotate Y. I can then choose the direction of the jump by just manipulating these keys here. So for example, if I want a jump to the right, I'm just going to put in here uh, minus 90, is that? Yeah. Right, so I'm rotating in minus 90 on these two middle keys while she's standing there, right? So if she's, she's facing forwards, then in the first 10 frames, she's going to rotate 90 degrees, do the jump roll, be on the ground, and when she's getting back up, she's going to be facing back forwards again, right? Super cheeky, super hacky, um, not the best animation. But in the end, it serves my purposes because I'm literally just doing um, R&D on the character controller and I just want some animations for placeholders, right? So this works perfectly fine. And then the same works in the other direction. You know, I can go 90. <coughs> and then she's going to go to the left and then face back forwards. And same with like 45 and minus 45 for that um, diagonal jumps. minus 45 and for the jumps like backwards um, I'm not sure because it, it, it's like if I go 135 which would be like you know um, 
back, like left back diagonally. Um, <coughs> I could do this, um, but I also could just um, do the 45, which is this. Uh, sorry, minus 45, which is that, and then just play that backwards. Right, so she does a backwards draw, for example, and I think that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna keep it that like like that um, that that simple and cheap, you know, by just reversing the animation in the end and be done with it. Um, I think it looks it's usable. I could I could set some more keys to change the weights, you know, cause the my retargets happen on a on an offset node. So, for example, if I pick a control that I haven't modified yet, like the head, for example, it's got no keys in it. All the keys are in this mocap group. So this is where I retarget the mocap to, and which leaves me with the actual control free of channels, uh, so that I can do offsets in the end. For example, I did like here uh, with the with the legs, for example, I corrected some of the of the issues that we're having, um, or the knee. The knee was facing, like was going through the ground, so I had to pull it up a bit. Um, stuff like that can all be corrected with this system um, by having offsetting groups uh, that you then store your mocap onto. Um, here, for example, I read I used the the pelvis. Um, um, your bone or control not to be the actual hip control but the center of gravity or the full body control so that like these things so the full body follows as well uh, that's not important it, it doesn't matter how much how is it but um, general a general rule of thumb if your character is doing big actions with the whole torso that involve um, great rotations you know like this she's basically flipping upside down for a while and then rotating back up. Um, you don't want to use this control because then you're going to leave this, uh, the full body behind and you want to move the full body with it if you do that. You don't want to separate your whole torso from the full body on greater rotations. You want to move the whole full body and then be able to use the hip control as a little offset of um, yeah, so a quick thing that I can also um, show you here is how exactly the um, retarget was made, because that's pretty easy. So if for any of you that it's actually working with um, Maya rigs, or I, I guess same si uh, same uh, methods would apply to Blender or 3ds Max, um, is. Uh, to have the skeleton, let me just grab that skeleton that I had somewhere. Uh, it was Alexander download. Where is it? Ah, here. Alexander items test. Sprint forward roll. Uh, actually, no, I have a scene that does that. Where is it? This one. I just saved this one from back and I save now. Right, so it's loading this other scene up. Basically, this scene is an in-between step that I had. Yeah, exactly. So here you can see what I did to retarget the skeleton properly. Um, so this is the Nixamo skeleton. Uh, it's a little bit bad that um, even if I specify root motion, it uh, it doesn't project the root motion onto a proper root bone. The root bone is always the hips, which is really broken. You can't use this for root motion because of that. Um, but anyway, so I reproportion the skeleton. So first off, I go to like frame minus ten to have a nice uh, smooth T blend, and then I basically zero out all rotations and go to a nice T pose, or in my case A pose or M pose, however you call that, and rematch the proportions. Like I rematch the lengths, I rotate the bones to be in place, and. Um, the clavicles I didn't rotate, I actually slept the hind arms because the clavicles 
are already zeroed out like by default so the the object scaler don't have them like in the middle of the volume instead of at the front um, I don't do that I set them where the clavicle ball actually drops from um, anyway so I reproportion the whole skeleton to match my my rig in T pose or this, this uh, A pose and then I have these controls and I have I wrote a little piece of code that then maps it's basically two arrays you know like uh, an array with my controls and an array in the same order with the joints of the driving skeleton and then I literally just go through those two arrays constrain uh, parent and to f from the from the joint to the controls and I just take that constraint out and then oh, I haven't done that here so I can actually just quickly do it and show you It's all still very messy here because I just have been writing all of this stuff. Um, where is it? Get the bag rig. Uh, no, that's not it. Where was it then? Yeah, so this is basically all the reproportioning that I do for the your Unreal Engine skeletons. The mix summer was a little bit different, so I just did it manually. Um, It's not here. Anyway, ah, here is it. Okay, so basically, here's the two arrays. You can see U4 control, uh, SE1 control, which is my rig. And basically, control is a little bit misleading because this is actually the bones. And these are the actual Unreal bones, but this is the Mixama bones. So I just made a, a new array with the new names. And these are then the controls that get baked out. So then further down uh, in here, that's basically like a five liner. Um, just go through the two arrays and parent constrain them. And I actually didn't declare these two guys. So all of this is set up in an automated that does this automatically. I, I just um, deconstruct it. I get to do this whole thing manually um, for this other rig. And uh, CP, JP, keep working. Uh, all of this fun. Okay, now. So that did it. Now if you select this guy, you can see the whole rig is highlighted in the, and you can now see it basically follows, right? And it stores all of these controls then my A2, this little two bake variable. So then I then just can go ahead, you know, and just bake the whole thing. Done. I could literally just delete the skeleton, we no longer need it because the animations are just baked directly onto the mocap groups for these controls. And then as you can see, the actual controls have no keys and they can still be moved and offset and you can go like wherever you want, you can set keys and whatnot. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I uh, just wanted to show you a quick uh, demonstration of uh, the rough workflow that I use. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And see you next time. Bye-bye.